Hey guys, this is Dakari Holder here once again. And it's 2020 already, man. Honestly, I don't know what to say. This year went by like that. It's been great and tough at the same time. I've been, I went through a lot of things. I accomplished a lot of things, which is one of the reasons why I haven't been as consistent as I wanted to on this channel. This coming year, I'm gonna try my best to create new content and to bring some more refreshing material uh, to you guys on this channel. With this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a recap on my top five most intriguing films of the year. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, then you know the deal. You already seen the list, but I'm doing this just just to express my love for these movies. Now I'm only doing five because uh, honestly, I didn't see a lot of the movies I wanted to see this year. The movies that I did see were just good and they weren't great, at least most of the movies I saw. <clears throat> right, Skywalker. Um, you know, I saw a small bit, about at least 10 or 11 great movies this year that really stood out to me. So, but I had to pick at least five that truly stood out. So I'm not gonna call this the best of 2019, I'm gonna call this the most intriguing films that I've saw 2019. The top five most intriguing. I'm gonna start from number five all the way to number one. You already know what it is. Number five, I'm gonna start with uh, Melina Matsuka's Queen and Slim. Um, now, when I went to go see this movie, I did not know what to expect. Uh, my mom came up with this theory thinking it was gonna be a black version of uh, Bonnie and Clyde. But I'm going into this movie and as soon as it starts, you already know that it's gonna be the complete opposite. Basically what this movie is, it's a meditative journey on or the human race basically. It's, that's basically what it is. It's showing how us black people are not just criminals roaming the street ready to rob somebody. We as black people get a lot of racial profiling nowadays and this movie showcased how most black people are just regular people like everyone else just roaming the earth minding their business and that's what Qu queen and slim shows queen and slim both of the characters i think they're just two basic normal people living their normal lives slim is a family man and queen who is an attorney who's very humble about it even though she really gets down to business when it comes to vital situations but this movie, I just loved how this movie showed that black people aren't always going to be out and about doing stuff that we're not going to do. It puts black people into a different spotlight. And that's what I love about this movie. It's a very realistic uh, feeling film. And I just love the atmosphere that it brings. And I think as years go by, this movie will gain a lot of importance. And number four, we have The Last Black Man in San Francisco. Um, this was directed by Joe Talbot, also um, co-written by Joe Talbot, and as far as I'm concerned, I think this is his feature film debut. It's all about this one guy and his best friend, but the main character, he's unfolding secrets about his family through this house that his grandfather built uh, in San Francisco, and so on and so forth. The movie just reminded me a lot of how Spike Lee created his stories and how he displayed or unfolded his stories on the screen you know how he juxtaposed the visuals representing how we made uh certain things like the houses and the accessories that we have on and stuff like that it juxtaposes that with uh people of color but it also expresses how we don't own any of it anymore so I just, the nature of that movie alone, I just thought was very, very cerebral because it gives you a lot to think about. It's a very, it's a very introspective film based on the concept of home and things of that nature. And I really thought it stood out. It's a very funny movie. It's a little weird, but it's very fresh in terms of its message and how one can make home into what they can make it. Number three is actually a movie that I have on Blu-ray and I should have had this out by now. And that is Us by Jordan Peele. This is the second feature film um, by Jordan Peele. He, write, he, he wrote and directed this and he produced this. That's right. But um, yeah, I saw this in theaters. I really enjoyed Get Out. I didn't know what to expect going into this movie. And I'm watching this movie and I'm getting a lot of old school horror vibes from the 80s type stuff. Like this is like, it has that 80s slasher feel. 
but what stood out the most to me was its moral capacity and its metaphorical story and imagery. It really has a lot to say about humanity and how we deal with our inner demons. We call these demons fear, hatred, anger, anything that's pretty much negative. And it shows that if we don't conquer them, tragedy. But if you do conquer them, triumph. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys caught that reference, but basically that reference I just made kind of really fits my interpretation of this movie. This movie's a masterpiece, in my opinion. It's not, I don't even view this as a horror movie. This It's not even just a horror movie. It's a really, really incredible study on the human race and how we deal with our negative sides. And it's such, a, such an incredible film. Definitely check this movie out. My number two pick is, has now grown to be the highest grossing film or the highest grossing film in the box office of all time. Of course, that is Avengers Endgame that I also have on Blu-ray as well. I think the reason why this movie was so highly anticipated was because of the events that happened in Infinity War. If you've seen Infinity War, then there's something at the end that really kind of just blew everybody away and anticipated everyone for what would happen next and this movie delivered on every single aspect personally i don't think i can say much about this movie because everything has already been said i mean this movie is amazing it, it really is this is the true culmination of 22 films in the past 11 years and what it does is just captures every single moment that was honored. It, it literally, it does. It, that was honored in the MCU in the past, as well as create its own established moments. And the fan service really kind of works in this movie. I don't care what nobody says. But uh, it's not perfect. I do feel like the first half of the movie definitely drags. You know, the pacing really kind of uh, slows down in the first act. But the second and third act, especially the third act really picks up uh definitely well worth all the three hours the acting the all the actors are amazing this was one of the best superhero movies ever made and possibly the most epic superhero film ever made if you've seen it and my number one pick which i didn't expect to be uh number one you know i was anticipating this movie i love this director i love these actors but i just didn't expect it to be so high above everything else because like i said i didn't see everything i wanted to see so that's one of the reasons why i didn't expect it so enough talking my number one pick is the irishman by uh martin scorsese and starring robert de niro al pacino and joe pesci all these four of these guys are in their 70s i think joe pesci's in his 80s and they still managed to make an incredibly compelling and meditative film uh it's pretty much a, a mournful eulogy uh, towards the uh, classic gangster genre. It really has a lot to say about, you know, morality and our choices that we make as humans and how we reflect on those choices that we make and the consequences of those choices we make. It's a very human film, despite the fact that, you know, there's some, sometimes it can be obvious de-aging effects, but a lot of the times the de-aging effects really are seamless. But as a film, it's, it's, it's three and a half hours. It's very long, but I make sure that I sat through the whole thing. And I, when I sat through the whole thing, it didn't feel like three and a half hours at all. I was completely immersed in what was on screen. And honestly, I loved every second of it, to, even if it's three and a half hours. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen The Irishman, I'm not going to say too much about it. But guys, if you haven't seen it and you love movies, that's a movie that you have to see. And out of everything that stood out to me, that this was my number one pick. This was my favorite film that I saw in 2019. That's my list for my most intriguing films of the year. Or of most intriguing films of 2019. Let me know if you've seen any of these movies. Let me know down in the comments. I would love to discuss about these movies. I haven't talked about music as much as I wanted to on this channel, but I'm definitely going to be doing so this year. Definitely doing so this year. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Just expect more content like this coming soon. I will try to keep the consistency going with these videos because 
honestly, a lot has happened this past year in 2019. So I'm trying to refresh everything and start anew with the new year. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys are having a happy new year. I'll see you guys soon. You guys have a blessed day.